Hi everybody. So today in this video or this Clo tutorial, we're going to be talking about the vertical toggle menus, which are in both our 2D and 3D windows. If you've ever been curious, those vertical toggles are in both our 3D window in the upper left-hand corner and also in the upper left-hand corner of our 2D window. And we're just gonna go through a full breakdown of what each of these do and show us. At the very top of our 3D one, we have something called quality render. And the quality render, when we turn this on, just adjusts the lighting in our scene, which we can see pretty quickly when we turn this on, we've suddenly got a much more realistic lighting and kind of I'd like to think of as a preview to my lighting in my render window. And all again, all of these are just click on or off. The next one below is our schematic render. And this one is really great for what we call 3D flats, pattern accurate flats, great for sketch review and showing off your sketches. And when you turn this tool on, you do get a pop-up menu where you can actually choose how you're going to view everything for the schematic render, including silhouette lines, seam lines, internal lines, top stitching lines. The line color can be changed. Currently, I just have it set to black. And as well, you can also change it to just a color version to see it all in white. And lastly, you can adjust the brightness or color below. Just going to simply click the X to exit out of this view. Next here, we have our garment display. And this is, has everything to do with how we are visually viewing the garments in this window. Again, we're not actually going to physically change anything about these garments. It's just visually how we are viewing things. The first one, when we come over, is to show garment. The shortcut is Shift W. And again, this just toggles our garment on and off. Pretty simple. The next one we have here is called show archive patterns. Now currently I do not have any archive patterns, but of course we're gonna show you what that means. If I select, let's say, my cardigan in 2D or in 3D, in the 3D window, I can right click on these patterns and come to this option, archive. Or in the 2D window, I can right click on a pattern piece in 2D, come down to where it says 3D pattern, select archive, and now the pattern pieces become invisible in our 3D window and become an outline of the pattern pieces in our 2D window. They are still completely there. They are just hidden. And the nice thing is, if we choose to want to bring these pattern pieces back, we simply go back to our 3D garment display, go to the second button over, show archive patterns, and bring it back. Pretty nice and simple. Next, what we have is our showing 3D seam lines, the third button over, shortcut, shift S. And this, if you pay attention to her shoulder seam here, we see a very clear shoulder seam and arm hole seam. And when I go ahead and toggle that off, those seams disappear. Basically, Clo hides the normal maps that create those seams. This is a great trick if you are creating a pattern or a sweater that you want to have the visual look of being seamless. The next one we have over here is our showing internal lines. So right now I currently have them toggled off, but the internal lines are those red lines we can have on our garment, which when I turn back on, we can see in my 3D window, the red outline for my patch pocket, and the same we can see those red lines in my 2D. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those back off. Next we have show baselines. Baselines are those purple markings that we can use on our pattern pieces as well. We can see here, those purple lines in 3D, marking off the edge for my placket button area. And we can also see those lines again in the 2D window. Next, we have our show 3D pen garment. When we turn it on, this is going to give us that ability to actually see those 3D pens on our clothing or garments. And those tools are right here on our 3D garment pen. So if I go ahead and turn one of these tools on, maybe just I want to mark off a possible future princess scene, let's say. I'm going to add in that line. The line is going to appear in our 3D window. In our 2D window, it'll appear here momentarily to be marked out. There it is. But what's nice is if I choose to not want this, I can of course toggle that back off. And those tools are again on our 3D toolbar right here, the 3D pen garment tool. After that, we have the ability to show threads or our sewing lines. When I toggle this on, I actually usually leave this on most of the time. If we want to see what that actually is doing, I can simply select a pattern piece, for example, the patch pocket. And if I pull it away from the garment, I see all of those different sewing threads right here that we can view. And of course, if I turn those sewing threads off for show threads, 
They are invisible, but still there. Just gonna really quickly choose that superimpose over option in my 3D window to snap that pocket back into place and simulate for a sec. There we go, back into place, perfect. The next one we have is our option to show pins and showing pins will show in our 3D window in bright red. I can see I have a few little pins here to hold her straps up currently, as well as some pins which are holding the cardigan in place. And our pin tool also is normally on our 3D toolbar right here. Looks like a pin with a square right there. From that one, we have two more tools for measurements. One is our show garment measure tool. And when I turn this tool on, I can see this green line has appeared in between my cardigan opening. And our show garment measure tools are here, again on our 3D toolbar, and these can be used to measure openings and distances between garments. The last tool that we have is our show 2D measurement. And this one is what shows us our 2D or POM point of measure measurements in our 3D window. So right here I can see I have the length of the sleeve as well as her bicep measured out in the 3D window. And these are going to correspond to my 2D pattern piece over here. Those POM tools exist on our 2D toolbar right here as well as we have our POM tab in the object browser. It is the one farthest to the right. If we continue down, the next tab down is our 3D trims display. The first one is the show button and we'll just zoom in really quick on her. If I choose to turn buttons off by clicking, we no longer see the buttons or the buttonholes. I can go ahead and turn those back on. The next tool we have is show piping. And if I just zoom into her pocket right here, I'm going to take this from being off to turning it back on. And now we can see there is actually piping around the edge of the pocket bag here. So we can turn piping on and off. As well, we have this option called show bond slash sky. And when we turn on our show bonding sky, there we go. We'll see this kind of orange glow on her pocket bags, which is letting us know visually that bonding has been applied to these pieces. We also see that exact same orange glow on our 2D pattern pieces as well. It is important to note that you can visually hide bonding in 3D, but it's always going to remain on in the 2D window. Next from there, we have the ability to show or hide our puckering. I've applied puckering to the seams of her skirt. And you'll notice when I toggle it on and off how the shadowing or puckering appears and disappears. The final one here is the ability to show or hide trims. And you'll notice that the buckle at her waist, which has been applied as a trim, will appear or disappear when I turn this tool on. As long as your object has been added as a trim, this tool will work. The next one we have down this is the fifth one down is our avatar display. First and most importantly is our show avatar shortcut shift A. If we click that we can hide or unhide our avatar. After that we have our handy arrangement points and these are how we arrange our pattern pieces around our avatar. This works in conjunction with the next tool over, show bounding volume. So when you attach or wrap a pattern piece, let's say a sleeve around the arm, it when you place the sleeve, it actually then follows the green circle around her arm so it knows how tight or loose to wrap it. From there, we have our show x-ray joints, shift x, and this will allow us to see our skeleton and actually even be able to select the joints and adjust. From there, we have our show avatar measurements. When we click this on, we can see all the standard measurements on our avatar and you can of course always add more or different measurements as well with the avatar measuring tools, again located on our 3D toolbar. The last one here is show 3D pen avatar. We can see when I turn this tool on, there is a line actually drawn down the center front of our avatar right at her collarbone. And those tools, again, have to do with our 3D avatar pen tools, again, on our 3D toolbar. Really though, some of the most important ones that we can have turned on or off or change between are our fabrics. There are two that most often are used, our thick textured surface and our textured surface. These two are most often used and the biggest difference is one shows the fabric thickness and one does not. If we are on show 
thick textured surface. I'm going to zoom in to her, the cardigan open here. We can actually see a clear amount of thickness that is on our fabric. And if we switch from thick textured surface to textured surface, suddenly we no longer see the thickness of the material. And if we go ahead and quickly hide our avatar, you'll notice that the inside of the garment or pattern pieces are all gray. What this tool does is textured surface leaves the texture on the outside, but grays out the reverse or back side of our material. So we know the right side and the wrong side of our materials, which can be super helpful. I'm going to go to our next one though. From there, we have monochromatic surface, which will turn our entire garment gray. We have translucent surface. So we can now see inside of our garment and completely through it. Mesh surface, which allows us to view the mesh of our garments. Thick textured surface back, which allows us to see the reverse or interior portions. And finally, my personal favorite, random colored surface, which will randomly color your pattern pieces, which is especially helpful if you maybe have a garment that has one color, but many pattern pieces, you can now clearly see all of those different pattern pieces defined. I'm going to switch back to the one I work most often in though, again, which is that thick textured surface or shortcut Alt 1. Next here, the third from the bottom, are our garment fit maps. We do have videos that go in depth to these, but the different ones are our stress map. The next one over is our strain map. From there, we have our fit map. And last but not least, our show pressure points map. So these are really great maps when you start to actually fit your garment. We're going to go ahead and turn our avatar back on by clicking show avatar. And here we have our textured surface. Currently, our avatar has a texture or a skin applied so we can see what she looks like. You can actually switch to a monochromatic surface, which is going to make the avatar look more like a mannequin. Or you could even turn on a mesh view of the avatar, which shows the avatar's mesh. The very last toggle is for environment displays. We have show 3D light. This is more so for if you have any lighting in your render engine applied, we can actually see her little dome light right at the center of her feet, but this would allow you to actually adjust and move the lights around without going into the render engine. Next, we have show light render, which makes sense. This one's for the actual rendered lights. We can see we have a few box lights as well as globe lights here or sphere lights. From there, we have our show wind controller. This is fun if you ever want to play with or add wind to a scene, you can actually turn on and adjust wind. We have our show ground grid, which can be toggled on and off, as well as just a show grid, which creates a grid over the entire scene. And now we're going to go ahead and just move over, last but not least to this, is our 2D vertical toggle tools. Now, most often people leave most of these off because you will notice pretty quickly that your scene or window can become quite crowded quite quickly. At the very top, we have our 2D sewing display, one which shows all of our sewing that has been applied or added to the garment. Next, showing top stitching that's been applied or added and also puckering, which has been applied or added to the garment. What's really nice though is I don't worry too much about leaving these turned on because when I actually go to those corresponding tools, our sewing tools, our top stitching tools, or our puckering tools, when we go to those individual tools, Chloe will actually show us all of that for example, when I've turned on my edit sewing tool, I now actually see all of the sewing. From there, we have our 2D pattern display. Our very first one showing baselines. And again, we can see those baselines on the front of our garment right at the placket area, which can be toggled on and off. We have our show seam allowance. This garment has seam allowance added to it, so we can see that or choose to not see it. If your garment has grading applied, you can choose to show grading or not. From there, we have our show 3D pen. So that line that we added to the front of our bodice right there, we can toggle on and off. Show reference lines is a really nice tool to have. So if we have show reference toggled on, and let's say we choose to make it edit, I'm just gonna quickly shorten the sleeve for a second. Chloe is going to leave behind a reference line for us to see what the original size or measurements were of that pattern piece, giving Chloe just a second to think so it can show me. Oh. 
and it looks like I maybe forgot to turn it on, but that is not a problem because that gives me an opportunity to show you guys the tool. I can select my sleeve here or maybe a simpler, quicker thing. I will select my pocket. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna start working my way down here till I come to clone as reference line. Again, I just right clicked on the entire pattern piece and chose clone as reference line. And now when I change my pocket bag width, I can see here clothes left behind a gray outline that's giving me a reference point for what the original pattern piece was. Zooming back out. Those are the 2D pattern display options right here. Oh, almost forgot one actually. The last but not least of these is show symmetric instance line. So if you have cloned or half symmetric patterns with that blue glow or with half symmetric patterns, that dashed line, you can actually toggle those options on and off. Next here, we have our 2D information display. The first option we have is to show pattern names. So we can see all the different names our pattern pieces were, are being called. We have pattern annotation, which is really nice. So we have our annotation tools on our 2D toolbar if you ever wanna add notes or annotations to your pattern pieces. From there, we have our show line length. So this, you can see how it can become quickly quite busy, but we see each individual segment length. We have show grain lines, where we now see the grain line on all the individual pattern pieces marked out for us. Show 2D measurement. Again, that is going to be these lines here, or POMs, on our sleeve that can be added individually. From there, we have a show ruler, which will be a ruler guide on our 2D window. And what's nice is you can right click on the ruler to adjust it to inches, centimeters, and millimeters. And last here is the show guidelines, which when we start to move pattern pieces around, you'll see those pink guidelines appear. From there, we again have fabric views, which we can turn on. Front textured surface, it's just going to show again the front textured surface. We do have monochromatic surface, which will show all our pattern pieces in white. The next one over, translucent surface, is really helpful. This is great if you're walking or bringing pattern pieces one on top of the other so we can actually see how they are starting to line up. Of course, using a sleeve is not the greatest example, but maybe I want to actually line up pattern pieces like side seams for the front and back bodice. Especially helpful when walking patterns. Let's click on that. From there, we have transparent surface. So this is just a completely sheer view. Show mesh view. So we can see the mesh here. Showing back texture surface. This is really helpful if you want to ever see maybe a graphic on the interior portion of your garment. And here I can see that there is a little clo graphic tag added to the back collar of her cardigan. And again, my personal favorite, random colored surface, will just randomly color all of your pattern pieces. Of course, most often you will be in front textured surface. At the very bottom, our last toggle in our 2D is our lock patterns options, which give you the option to lock your pattern outlines, lock your internal lines, lock your baselines, and lock your guidelines. I hope that all of you have found this super helpful in explaining what both the 3D and 2D vertical toggle are. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments for us to answer later. Thank you so much, bye.